I was preparing songs for this week, uh, the Lord gave to me some scriptures that describe the worship service that is going on in the throne room of heaven all of the time and that we, by faith, join into because of the sacrifice of Jesus. We are there with them and they are here with us. And so I just want to share these scriptures with you. In Revelation 8, 3 through 5, it says, Then another angel with a gold incense burner came and stood at the altar, and a great amount of incense was given to him to mix with the prayers of God's people as an offering on the gold altar before the throne. And then also in Revelation 4, 9 through 11, it says, Whenever the living beings give glory, the living beings, that's us, friends, Whenever the living beings give glory and honor and thanks to the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down and worship the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, and they lay their crowns before the throne and they say, you are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and they exist because you created what you pleased. When you created God, you created us in whom you are pleased. You saw that it was good. God, today we rejoice in our opportunity to honor you and bring glory to you, to join the heavenly host around the throne, to give glory and honor to the one who lives forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. All the saints and angels before the Lamb of God and sing you are worthy of it all oh, yes, God. you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory
Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful Sunday morning in Colorado Springs, and uh, we had an exciting week last week. We got some snow, and we got some warm days, and it was just great. Hey, uh, I just wanted you to know that it's such a delight being with you on Sunday mornings here. Um, we record this on a Zoom uh, system, and then we put it up on Facebook and various places, but uh, we study through the entire Bible in a year. And the book that we use to guide us is the Bible Highlights booklet. This is a copy of it, and I'd be happy to send you a copy of it if you would like. And um, it starts off in January in Genesis 1 and 2, and then it ends, it walks through, walks you through all the primary theologies of the Bible, and then typically a chapter every day. And then here's December 31st when you finish with Revelation 22. And so, so this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, little booklet. It was put together by Mark Watkins, one of the men of our church. And uh, if you'd like to get a copy of this for your personal use or to follow along with any of our studies, you can just text me at 719-338-0079, and I'll be happy to uh, have the office send this to you. <clears throat> right under the front cover of this booklet is a page called The Importance of the Scripture. And with all the things going on in the government and in our society with uh, COVID and other issues that are coming up, we're finding that the more we know about Scripture, the, the, it gives us the ability to be on the solid rock, who is Jesus, to live our lives in a consistent, uh, steady way. So we're not in a tizzy. We're not all stirred up. We're not all anxious all the time, but we're able to stay steady and, con and consistent no matter what goes on. Here's what the Bible says about the Word of God. In Matthew 4, 4, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, it says, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Well, we know that all scripture is God breathed. <clears throat> and so scripture are the words that come from the mouth of God. Now, we can read it. As we read in our Bible, that's the logos. That's the solid, consistent word of God that applies to us all the time. And then sometimes God will quicken and breathe into us some of those scriptures and some uh, unique word that may be encouraging and uplifting and faith building to us. And that's rhema. That's the living spoken word of God into our personal lives. And the more of the scriptures we know, which is the written word, then we uh, develop a stronger relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, which is the living word. And so uh, as we get to know the Lord, that illuminates the scriptures. So the living word illuminates the written word and the written word reveals the living word and we grow in the Lord and we develop great faith. In Hebrews 4.12, it says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul, that's the worldly part of us, and spirit, that's the godly part of us, between joint and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. And so we meet ourselves by learning the word of God, and we become more authentic as we learn the word of God. In 2 Timothy 3, 15 through 17, the Bible says the Holy Scriptures have given you the wisdom 
to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. And so there it talks about, the, essentially it's saying the scriptures are the key to life. That no matter what goes on with the government or our family or the economy or whatever, the scriptures will give us instruction and guidance. In Psalm 119.9, the Bible says, how can a young person stay pure by obeying your word? In Psalm 119.11, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. In Psalm 119.160, it says, the very essence of your word is truth. All your just regulations will stand forever. And then in Isaiah 55, 11, the last half of that verse says, I sent it the word out and it always produces fruit. It will, ne it, it will accomplish all I want it to accomplish and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Okay, so it's important that we get the Bible into our lives. Now, here's what's interesting about it. <clears throat> we can read the Bible and that's always good. All right. But the most important thing when we read the Bible is that we really comprehend what the Bible's teaching. The worst way to teach is a, a lecture and a monologue situation. So every weekday morning, we have a Bible study that's discussion oriented, and we go through the Bible highlights booklet. And uh, we study that chapter for that day with the goal of after that Bible study, we know the big ideas from that chapter and how it applies to our life. I would invite you to join us. It's, it's Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And if you're interested in that, send me a text and uh, or call me and we can talk about you joining the group. Uh, my number is 719-338. 0079. And so you would be welcome to join with us, which would be wonderful. Well, today's text is Exodus 17. And in the first encounter in Exodus 17 is the story about Moses being with the children of Israel, wandering through the desert, and them getting thirsty. And then Moses takes his rod and touches a rock, and water comes out of the rock. Let me read to you to read it to you real quickly. It says, uh, this is Exodus 17, New Living Translation, beginning with verse 1. At the Lord's command, the whole community of Israel left the wilderness of sin and moved from place to place. Eventually they camped at Raphidim, but there was no water there for the people to drink. So once more the people complained against Moses, give us water to drink. They commanded. Now, <clears throat> here they were in the perfect will of God, doing what God wanted them to do, but they were still suffering because they didn't have water. And so they complained to Moses about that. And Moses responded, quiet, Moses replied, replied, why are you complaining against me? And why are you testing the Lord? Verse three, but tormented by thirst, they continued to argue with Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Are you trying to kill us, our children and our livestock with thirst? And so they're blaming Moses for rescuing them from slavery because they're thirsty. And as you know, water is very important. It's actually <clears throat> more important than food. We can go without food longer than we can go without water. And they were concerned about their children and their livestock as well. Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what should I do with these people? They are ready to stone me. So he goes and prays about it. While the people are blaming and complaining, Moses goes and has a meeting with the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, walk out in front of the people. So God wanted Moses to do something public in response to this public criticism. 
Take your staff, the one you used when you struck the water of the Nile, and call some of the elders of Israel to join you. So God wanted the leadership that had been joined to Moses to be with him as Moses did something very public in response to this need. I will stand before... uh, I will stand before you on the rock at Mount Sinai. Strike the rock and water will come gushing out. Now, it's not going to trickle out. It's not going to barely come out. It's going to gush out. Then the people will be able to drink. So this is how the Lord provides. Sometimes we're in a situation where the Lord just supernaturally provides for us. And this is a beautiful, beautiful example of that. Then it says, so Moses struck the wall rock as he was told and water gushed out as the elders looked on. So obedience produced a public miracle. Moses named that place Massa, which means test. And Merabah, which means arguing, because the people of Israel argued with Moses and tested the Lord by saying, is the Lord here with us or not? All right, so here <clears throat> talks about how when we, when we go through this life, difficult situations will come up, but the Lord will provide a solution. Now, everybody, we know how the Bible teaches that Jesus is our solid rock. He is the cornerstone. He is the capstone, okay? Solid rock, meaning it's stable and steady no matter how the wind blows, no matter how how the water rises, no matter what the difficulties are, he is a solid rock. He's also the cornerstone. What is that? That's the solid rock that a building is built on. And so that's the corner. It holds the weight of the building and it stays stable, steady, and consistent. Capstone, that means if you have an arch, the capstone is right there in the middle, holding the weight of the arch so that those arches don't collapse. That's who Jesus is in our lives. And so during this time, this is a great time to learn the scriptures, to grow in the Lord. And here's what's interesting about Jesus being our solid rock and Jesus being our cornerstone and Jesus being our capstone. Out of that stability and strength comes living water for our souls, comes the encouragement and the uplift that every one of us needs, comes the enlightenment and the miracles that we need as we walk through the the turbulent times that we experience here on the earth. See, it's an incredible thing that out of the rock comes living water. It's not stale, and there's not a shortage of it. It comes gushing out. And so I would encourage every one of you that are here with me this morning, receive the uplift of the living water that's available to you. Receive the encouragement that's available to you, the life that's available to you, the encouragement, the hope, the faith, the the wonderful, wonderful miracle working power of God that's available to every one of us if we will depend on Jesus, our solid rock, and if we will trust Jesus, our cornerstone, and if we will see the strength in Jesus, our capstone, out of which will come wonderful, wonderful, gushing, wonderful, fresh, invigorating, life-giving water. Well, it's a powerful thing when we see what a wonderful thing the Lord has provided for us. And when we're in the desert and when we get thirsty and we get dry, all we have to do is let the Lord Jesus provide us that fresh living water to refresh us and encourage us. So in conclusion, I would really enjoy hearing from you if you're interested in joining us with our daily Bible studies, 10 a.m. Mountain Time on Zoom, and you can uh, text me or call me and we can communicate about you joining the group. And you don't have to be there every day. You can be there one day a week or a couple times a week or, or if you have time to come join us every day. It's a wonderful blessing. And of course, we are here uh, with this with this Bible study. And at St. James Church, we have an in-person meeting every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We have tables set up, so we have social distancing taken care of. Some people wear masks, others don't. We encourage people to, but um, you would always be welcome because we want you build up strong and healthy. Hey, the Lord Jesus bless you. You have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.